All right. So uh, as far as the binomial key concepts are concerned, obviously we need to know the general term expansion formula. A plus B to the power N formula. It is uh, like obviously it is TR plus one term formula it is NCR A to the power N minus R B to the power R, where obviously NCR is N factorial over N minus R factorial over R factorial. And um, in simple context, it is compared with the Pascal's triangle. If you see 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And similarly, we can, instead of 1, we can write down 1, C, 0, 1, C, 1, 2, C, 0, 2, C, 1, 2, C, 2, 3, C, 0, 3, C, 1, 3, C, 2, 3, C, 3, and so on. So last row, if it is, you don't want to write on for fifth row, it will be 5C0, 5C1, 5C2, 5C3, 5C4, and 5C5. So these will be the coefficients, which will be like 5C0 value is going to be 1, 5C4 is 5, uh, I mean 5C2 uh, will be, 5C1 will be 5, 5C2 will be uh, 10, 5C3 will be also 10, 5C4 will be 5 and 5C5 is obviously 1. You can compare that and um, a quick shortcut in case if you're expanding some stuffs like NC0, NC0 is always 1, remember? NC1 is always N. NC2 um, is N, N minus 1 over 2. NC3 is N, N minus 1, N minus 2 over 3, 2, 1. So from this number, you go back all the way until 1. And so if you go back two times from the this number, you go back two times. So for example, if you are evaluating 62, you just do 2 times 1. And so you went back once, you do 6 times 5. You went back once. If you're doing 64, uh, NC4, let's say, it'll be 4, 3, 2, 1. So 4, 3, 2, 1. So you went back three times. So it'll be n, n minus one, n minus two, n minus three. So you'll have to go back three times here as well. So this is the shortcut in case if you wish to remember. Now, uh, as far as the negative indices are concerned, remember that this was valid only for the positive indices uh, with integer. With negative indices, if the formula is of the format one plus x to the power n, it will be one plus n x, plus n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus n, n minus 1, uh, n minus 2, x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. And this expression is meaningful or valid only if like your absolute value of x, whatever it is here, is less than 1. So it means that the series will converge or will be meaningful only if it is uh, between x is between minus 1 and 1. And there is no end to the series. This will go all the way until infinity. So that's why the x value has to be between minus 1 and 1, so that the later terms become close to 0. If you look at, uh, for example, if you're instead of, like, if you're expanding this 1 plus 2x to the power, uh, let's say, n. Now, instead of, if it is, and obviously here, n has to be a rational number. n, I mean, n has to be a fraction. Like, for example, n has to be any number in the form b by q or n can be negative integer, uh, n can be negative integer. So this formula is valid for those. This formula doesn't apply if you don't have one here. So if you have got something different, you need to make it one first. Yeah, so if it is like, for example, two plus three x to the power negative half, if I'm expanding, first you need to make this two, instead of two, you need to have one. So this will be basically, instead of two, I'll take first, Two common and become one plus three x by two to the power of whole thing to the power negative half. And remember that this power negative half belongs to both of these. So it'll be two to the power negative half and one plus three x upon two to the power negative half. Now you'll expand this. Your x will be basically three x by two. So x will be three x by two and n will be negative half. So I'm not going to simplify the expression, but I'll just write on the expression for simplification and validity. The two to the power negative half is one over root two. Uh, in bracket will be one plus n is negative half times x is three x by two. 
plus negative half into negative half minus one into three x by two the whole square upon two this is here i'm just plugging in this formula i'm just expanding until x square term you can do up till whatever they ask you in the exam so one over two root two will be one minus three x over four plus this is negative half negative three over four and then divided by eight so will be negative positive three over eight times 9x squared by 4. So you can further simplify this. Now, this series will be only valid if your this value, absolute value of 3x by 2, is less than 1. It means that 3x by, by 2 has to be between minus 1 and 1. And that gives us x has to be between minus 2 third to 2 third. If you don't have this x range, you can use the series to find out the values or apply the series only if your x is between minus 2 third and 2 third. Okay, so this is yeah, this is the basic like you know uh, rule for the conversions. Okay, so for the A part, let's just quickly discuss the answer since they have already given the uh, partial fraction. So you can just cross multiply. So two plus seven x will be a times one minus x plus b times one plus two x. Now you can take x as one. Uh, both the sides, you get 2 plus 7 equals to uh, b times 3. So you get b as 3. Uh, you take x as negative half. If you plug x as negative half, both the sides, you get the value of a as negative 1. So that's the value of a and b is. Now to find out the expansion of this, uh, directly don't apply the series on this particular part apply the series on this side. So a is negative one. So negative one over one plus two x plus b is three over one minus x. So just write it as negative one, one plus two x to the power minus one plus three times one minus x to the power minus one. Uh, carefully open the brackets. And if you open the brackets uh, for each of them, uh, let's say one plus two x to the power minus one, take n as minus one, x is 2x and if you open that up it'll be 1 minus 2x plus minus 1 minus 2 or uh, times 2x the whole square over 2 factorial and so on uh, so that's going to be here which simplifies to negative uh, 1 minus 2x plus 4x square so that's the answer for this part be careful with this minus that is outside still now for the second part it is three times one plus x one minus x to the power negative one and if we expand that it'll be three times one plus x plus x square and so on so that should be the answer for the second part now you just have to add these two so if i add these two i'll get basically um negative one plus two x minus four x square plus three plus three x plus three x square and so on so if it simplifies you'll get um, 2 plus 5x and minus x squared. So this will be the uh, expansion for this part. Now, they're saying that give a reason why the series is not valid. Now here, uh, remember that this series is valid. The first one is valid when 2x is between minus 1 and 1. So x is between minus half and plus half. And second one is valid between x is between minus 1 and 1. Now you will be looking at the intersection of these two domains. So the next series will be only valid from x between minus half to plus half. Now, since this series lies, this value lies outside this range, x, x is three fourth is outside minus half and half. That's how you, the series, this convergence won't be valid for x as three fourth. So here we have to do uh, the expansion of one minus X to the power one third, and then you have to uh, substitute X as one nine to find the value of cube root of nine. So obviously when you expand one minus X to the power one third, your N is one third and X is basically going to be replaced by minus X. So formula of one plus X to the power N is one plus N X plus N and minus one over two X squared plus N and minus one n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cube and so on. So you just write down the, you have to write down the first three terms. So if you take uh, 
1 plus n is 1 third times x is minus x, 1 third times 1 third minus 1 over 2, x is nothing but negative x squared, and so on. If you simplify this, it is 1 minus x by 3 and minus x squared by 9. So that will be the expansion. Now you have to put uh, x as 1 over 9 both the sides. So if I put 1 over 9, so 1 minus 1 over 9 to the power 1 third will be 1 minus, instead of x, if you put 1 over 9, it will be 1 over 27 minus 1 over 729. And uh, so if you take simplification of this part, it is going to be uh, 701 over 729. Now this is 8 over 9. Uh, this bracket is 8 over 9, the cube root of that. And so 8 cube root of 8 is nothing but 2. So 2 over cube root of 9 is 701 over 729. You can solve for cube root of 9, which is uh, 1458 over 701. So that's the exact value of the this thing. And you can expect this question in paper one. Such questions can be in paper one. Okay, so if you wish to prove that log pi to the base two is a irrational number, uh, obviously by contradiction we have to prove. So we assume that log pi to the base two is a rational number, which means that it can be written as p by q, but p and q are in the simplest form. Um, so from here, if you eliminate log term, it will be pi equals to two to the power p by q. So pi to the power q equals to two to the power p, if you bring q to the other side. And since now, if you put any q or p values, okay, left-hand side, your left-hand side will be uh, always odd and right hand side will be two raised to p will be always even. They can't ever be equal, hence our assumption is wrong, hence this is a irrational number. So here if you have to let's say prove that q root of 2 is a rational number, so um, it's they are saying that it is a rational number. So you assume that q root of two is a rational number, which is p by q, and it and obviously p and q are in the simplest form, means there is no common factor. So no common factor after this. So from here you'll get two equals to p q over q q. So you'll get p q as two times q q. That's your uh, uh, expression here. Now. If you look at here, since for any q value, p cube uh, is two times q cube. Okay, so it means that p cube is even number. Okay, so p cube is an even number, hence p must be also even number. Okay, now it means that if it is an even number, it has to be some multiple of two. So I assume that p is two k. And if you plug PS 2K here, you'll get uh, 8K cube equals to 2K cube, and you get Q cube equals to 4K cube. Um, since Q cube is an even number, so Q also must be even. So we have to first prove that step. So Q cube is an even number. So Q is also even. Now, if both are even, so it means that 2 is a common factor for both of them. So if both of them are even, how can we have two as a common factor? Like, you know, for example, if a rational number is one third, it does not have any common factor. But I'm saying, okay, two by six, you got a common factor here, which simplifies to one third. Okay, so since this is contradicting our uh, assumption that uh, any rational number in the form of P by Q must not have a common factor. Okay, it is completely like, you know, wrong because it is having a common factor of two. 